Let's take a look at example 39 and 40. Now we have all three rules right here for derivatives of arc, arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. Um, one thing to keep in mind, um, as you can see with these first two examples here, is all of the idea behind the chain rule comes into play here as well. Yeah, you need to know these, but you also need to be ready to use them in regard to the, uh, in the chain rule as well. Okay, And that's the situation that we have with number 39. You're asked to find the derivative of inverse sine of 4x. So it's not just x, it's 4x there. If it was just x, that would be our answer, and we move on to the next problem. But we have a 4x there, so we're going to have to do the chain rule. All right? The outer function is inverse sine. The inner function is 4x. Okay? So we derive the outer function according to the chain rule. All right? So sine, inverse sine's derivative is 1 over square root 1 minus. Okay? That's the template for the derivative of inverse sine. Okay? If there's an x, we put an x right there. But it's not. It's 4x. So now we keep the inner function. So instead of having x squared here, it's going to be 4x squared. You want to be careful. You want to make sure that you wrap it in parentheses because we're squaring the entire term, not just the x term. Okay. So we derive the outer. That's why we have the 1 over square root of 1 minus. We keep the inner, which is why we have the 4x being squared. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. The inner function is 4x. What's its derivative? Exactly. It's just 4. All right. So we're going to multiply this by 4. <clears throat> Some of you are looking at that and say, can we simplify this? Yes, you can. Do you have to? In a free response question, no. Just like always, you don't have to simplify. But in a multiple choice question, this may not be what one of the four options is going to look like. So you want to be ready to simplify. And we can do two quick things right here. The first of which is since we're doing 1 times 4, we know that when we're doing a fraction times a whole number, that whole number could just move right up into the numerator. So 1 times 4 is really 4 up there in the numerator. And then down in the denominator, we have the quantity 4x squared. We can actually square that out. 4 squared is 16. x squared is literally x squared. So we're going to have square root of 1 minus 16x squared here in the denominator. Okay. So we're doing the chain rule within the context of the inverse sine derivative. Okay. Let's do the chain rule again, this time with in the derivative of inverse cosine. All right? So example number 40, we're looking for the derivative of arc cosine of x cubed. Okay? Same thing as before. Inverse cosine's derivative, because that's the outer function. So negative 1 over square root 1 minus. Okay? Same template with the, you know, we've got the negative sign, of course. Now, that's derive the outer. We keep the inner. The inner function is x cubed. So we're going to keep that. So we have x cubed being squared. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. What's the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared. That's right. So times 3x squared. And again, if we simplify this ever so slightly, the 3x squared can move up into the numerator. So we have negative 3x squared up in the numerator. And in the denominator, we're cubing x and then we're squaring it. An exponent to an exponent. What do we learn about in algebra class when you have an exponent to an exponent? What do you do with the exponents? That's right, you multiply them. So in the denominator, we'll have square root 1 minus x to the 6. And that will be the derivative of arc cosine of x cubed. 